in today's video, I'm so excited because we are going to Taiwan! <laughs> if you guys don't know, I am actually half Taiwanese and before 2020, I used to try to go to Taiwan every year, but this was my first trip back since then. So I did go a bit overboard while I was there. So this video will be split up into two parts. I was just so happy and excited to share all my favorite places with you guys. If you're excited for the video, give it a thumbs up. It really helps the channel and let's go to Taiwan. I literally can't contain my excitement. I've been waiting for this moment all year. We just stopped by Tianjin Tongzhua Bing, which is a very famous galleon pancake spot on Yongkong Street in Taipei. It's a very famous food street. There's tons of good stuff to eat here. But anyway, let's get into this. I got the Taiwanese basil and egg version. That's my favorite. Mm. I cannot tell you how happy this makes me. This is literally in my last meal on earth list. Mm. The scallion pancake is nice and chewy. It has a good crisp on the outside and it's so, so flaky. Like you see them fluffing it up on the griddle. And then when you add the egg, it adds this creaminess and then you have the brightness of the basil and it's Taiwanese basil. So it's like extra sharp. This is the perfect breakfast. Like if I lived near here, I would eat this every day. I'm not getting you. I love this thing. Right now we are at the original Din Tai Fung. Actually, the original is across the street, but they only do takeout now. So they opened this new one across the street and it's my first time at this one because when I came here four years ago, you could still eat at the original location. So this, I guess, is the new original. Of course, we have to get the famous pork shalom bao. They come with 10 pieces and look at those perfect folds, 18 folds on each one. I never bother to count, but I believe them when they say that. <laughs> they advise here that the perfect shalom bao sauce is made up of one part soy sauce, three parts, rice vinegar and then also I asked for this chili oil on the side the way I like to eat it is bite the top suck out all the juice then add more of the sauce and then eat it all in one bite oh my god the tender pork just melts in your mouth it's so juicy the skin is nice and thin it stays intact which is so important in shallow bao because if it doesn't stay intact then all the soup leaks out we got these pork and shrimp shao mai and I always wanted to try these but my mom never ordered them for me so now that I'm an adult I can order it for myself <laughs> Wow, these are so juicy as well. I did not expect them to be so juicy. Look at all that soup. This one, the skin is definitely thicker. It's still really good. The pork is really melting your mouth, just like the shallow bao. And it just has a little more chewiness on the skin. And then you have the addition of the shrimp on top. They have this new chicken. I think it's marinated in Shaoxing wine. I've never seen Din Tai Fung have this before. Mm, the texture is really nice. It has like a bite to it, but also a tenderness. The skin is nice and soft. Every time I come to Din Tai Fung, I have to get their spicy wonton. Like I'm pretty picky about my spicy wontons, but Din Tai Fung never disappoints. The secret is really in that sauce. Mmm. Mm. The shrimp in there is nice and snappy. The pork filling is soft. This one's actually not as spicy as the US one, I think, which is so interesting. But the flavor, the umami flavor of the sauce, oh, I love it. Another must get for me is their pork chop fried rice. Look how shiny and glistening that pork chop is. Has like a salt and pepper taste, a little bit of five spice flavor as well. Could be juicier though. It's a little dry. Din Tai Fung has really perfected the egg fried rice. You can feel each granule of rice perfectly balanced with the egg and the scallions. And I have to show you guys my favorite way to eat this fried rice. So once you finish all your wontons and you have all this sauce, you're gonna add the egg fried rice into this sauce. Then you give it a good mix. Coat every grain of rice. None of it goes to waste. I could bathe in the sauce, it's so good. All right, we just got dessert. First up, we have these golden lava buns. They're actually new. Wow, oh, let's open this. Oh my gosh. <gasps> wow. Look at that. Mm, very rich salted egg flavor. It's a little grainy from the salted egg, but wow, it's nice and warm. The bun is fluffy. We also got these sesame buns. Let's break this open. Whoa, that rich black sesame color. And there's so much filling in there. It looks like there's a little like mochi layer, kind of. 
Whoa, the black sesame flavor is so strong. Not too sweet at all, but I think the bun is too much. If it was a little thinner, it'd be a perfect balance, but good. Okay, so we just finished eating at Din Tai Fung and I have a few tips for you guys to minimize your wait time. So the location opens at 11 a.m. We got there at 9.30 and they said that they wouldn't start giving out numbers until 10.30. So at around 10.15, we started lining up and there was already a line of people to get numbers. So if you want to be in the first wave, definitely get there between 10 and 10.15 to line up and get a number. Then they'll hand you a number at 10.30. And then if you get here a little early, go eat that green onion pancake. So, so good. We are at Yongkang Neuro Mian, also known as Yongkang Beef Noodles. Many, many, many people think this is the best beef noodle soup in Taiwan. In the past, I tend to agree, but I'm always open to trying new ones and seeing if I find something better. I always get the half tendon, half beef beef noodle soup. It's a little bit spicy, as you can see from the broth. There's like this redness to it. Those noodles are so slurpable. They have a little bit of a chew to it, like a little QQ texture. And you can get some of the flavor of the broth through just slurping the noodles alone. Very rich, deep, beefy flavor. A little bit spicy. That is a hearty broth. Now for a piece of beef. Mm. The beef is so tender. When I picked up this piece of my chopsticks, it felt pretty like thick and hefty, not like melt in your mouth. But wow, it actually is really, really tender. They also give you this side bowl of mustard greens that you can just add. And the acidity and crunchiness from that really helps cut the fattiness and richness. So definitely a must. I dream about this bowl. Oh, so good. <laughs> Right, now we are at Chen Shui Tong, which is said to be the originators of boba milk tea. They also are the parent company of TPT, which is one of my favorite boba shops back home. And I got their Chie Guan Ying milk tea with boba. I also love how it comes in this huge glass. This is a medium size. Look how big it is. Oh, it's so creamy. Very creamy and frothy. And the boba, it is a smaller size. Like, I'm using my Feed Mei Mei boba straw, but the straw that they give you, it actually is smaller than a normal boba straw because their boba is smaller. The texture of the milk tea is incredibly creamy, but not too, like, thick. And it has a good amount of tea flavor. Although I do think that TPT at home, their Tia Guan Ying milk tea is stronger in tea flavor. This one's lighter and more subtle, but still good. And this one, I got full sweet, and it's still not too sweet, actually. It's like creamy yet refreshing. Alright, now we are at Master Spicy Noodle. It's like a very unique way of enjoying beef noodle soup. So I got the set that comes with spicy beef soup and then they have their noodles on the side served with a soft boiled egg. It's very interesting to have beef noodle soup like this because the beef broth and the noodles are separated. Wow, these are so chewy and springy. I love me a chewy noodle and these are delivering. I'm gonna try some of this broth. Ooh, it's kind of like on the lighter side. It's not super, super rich like the Yongkong beef noodles, but it's quite nice. It's like a light broth and the noodles already have some flavor to it. So you don't need like a super, super rich broth to go with it. The beef is very interesting. Usually in beef noodle soup, you get chunks of beef, but these are sliced really thin, almost like hot pot. So it's very unique to have beef noodle soup in this way. Last but not least, we cannot forget the eggs. Look at the jammy yolk. Yeah. Overall, I really did not know what to expect, but it's really good. When the sky was burning, people talking about dreams and the future. Conversations in my backseat, Jameson and caffeine, things kept in between, between us. Okay, now we are at the Raoha Night Market. If there's one thing you eat here, it has to be this. Here is the glorious pepper bun. Ah! 
they cook it in this like tandoori oven type thing. It's like a barrel and it's super hot in there and that's how they get it to be so crispy. And you can literally see them making it out on the street. They put tons of meat filling in there and then they dunk it in this huge bowl of green onions and somehow magically they can seal it and you cannot see any of the green onions anymore. Like honestly, it's magic. Let's give it a try. Mm. Mmm, that bottom is so crispy. The dough is chewy as well, and it has such a nice meaty, peppery flavor. The scallions also adds a lot of the onion flavor too. We let ours cool down a little bit, so it's still manageable, but if you eat one fresh, you gotta be careful because it's gonna burn your mouth. <laughs> this is like the perfect temperature to enjoy it at. Mm. So for our second stop at Rauha Night Market, we went to this mochi stall and it's on the Michelin guide. Once you see the stand, you can definitely tell because it says all over the stand, Michelin, Michelin, Michelin. But they just sell one thing, which is their mochi. And it's so interesting because when you watch them make it, they have these already made mochis and then they cut it open and add filling and then they coat it in peanut powder. Mm. The texture of the mochi is so nice. Very chewy and soft and stretchy. The filling, I believe, is like a sesame filling. And then it's like extra nutty because you also have the peanut powder on the outside. And it's also not too sweet. are at Yonghe Doujiang Dao Wang, also known as Yonghe Soy Milk King. It's a very famous soy milk place in Taiwan. So here they give you this menu with English and pictures, and then they give you this so you can match the number of what you want and you can order. So first up, let's start with this Doujiang cold sweet soy milk. And of course we have to use our feed meme glass boba straw, link will be in the description as always. Woo! very cold and refreshing. All right, first up, let's try this bun. Let's go ahead and open it. Ooh, look at that meat filling inside. Oh my gosh, hella pillowy, like biting into a soft cloud. The meat is actually really nice. There's not that much filling. I wish there was more, but it does have a lot of flavor. So even though there could be more meat, the bun part still balances out the flavorfulness of the meat. Moving on to my all-time favorite Taiwanese breakfast item ever. It's called fan tuan. So on the outside, you have the sticky rice, and then on the inside, they usually have Chinese donut, yo tiao, pork floss, and some pickled veggies. The yo tiao in here is actually quite soft, not like super crispy and fried. The pork floss adds this nice umami flavor, and I love the crunch of the pickled veggies too. Not the best banchuan I've ever had, but it does the job. Next we have this dan bing, which is egg pancake, and we got it with pork floss. The pancake on the outside has a nice little chew to it, which I really love. And then you get the egg flavor and the pork floss, and I also get a little bit of sweetness in there too. I feel like I might like this better as just standing without the pork floss, but still good. Okay, next up we have the xian doujiang, also known as salty soy milk. And this is such an interesting texture. Just look at it. It's kind of like, looks like curdled-ish, and it's so jiggly. <laughs> Oh, I really like the green onion flavor here. Very interesting. It kind of like melts in your mouth. Almost like a very soft and jiggly tofu-ish. And then you get the Chinese donut, which is very soggy because it's been in the salty soy milk for a long time, but it's really nice too. Next, we have this xiaobing dan, I think. It's basically xiaobing, which is this flaky pastry. And then on the inside, there's egg. Mmm, very flaky. Has a nice crisp on the outside. The egg on the inside pairs perfectly with it. They have some of the sauce, so I'm gonna put some on here. Mmm, it's basically like a soy garlic kind of sauce. It's really good with this, actually. Then last but not least, we have this xiaolongbao. As you can see, they put hella ginger on top, so I'm not happy about that, but I'll try to avoid it as much as I can. I remember from the past, the shallow ball here is not bad, but it's not amazing either. The skin has a nice little chew to it. It is thin. It could be more soupy though. And the skin breaks apart a little easily. So the soup leaks out quite easily as well. But yeah, it's like super cheap. Everything that we got was 290 NT, which is less than $10. So definitely very well worth it. Okay, now we are at 
curate kombucha or like curate kombucha. And the whole concept of this place is kind of mixing like boba and kombucha together. Like they basically make boba kombucha drinks. So here I have their curate fruit tea. They describe it as a vibrant symphony of fresh Taiwanese fruits interwoven with kombucha. I also got crystal boba on the bottom. Oh, whoa. It basically tastes like a super fresh fruit tea, but it has like the fizziness of kombucha as well. But it's not also not like overly carbonated. Like I don't like drinks that are hella, hella, hella carbonated, but this is like a nice level because the tea part balances out the carbonation. Wow, that's good. Oh my gosh. And then we also got their pink rosé. It's so pretty. It's the perfect blend of jade purse lychee and red tea. I also got crystal boba in this one. Whoa, it's very floral. The strongest flavor is the lychee. And I also really love the flavor of the lychee paired with the crystal boba because it reminds me of eating those lychee jelly cups. I used to love those when I was a kid. This one's like a bit sweeter, but they're both good. Okay, this is a peach black tea with sweet cream, cold foam, and Rose jam. I think I got that correct. Interesting. The foam adds this nice creaminess. You get a peach flavor from the iced tea. I don't get that much of the rose jam flavor, but I'm not mad about that either. I don't love when rose is like super floral. Hmm, not bad. have a bunch of Michelin stickers on the outside. So many years they've been recognized by Michelin, but I got a bowl of their spicy beef noodle soup. It has beef, it has tendon, it has bok choy, and of course it has noodles. Look at that. Ah. Oh my gosh, those noodles are so nice and springy and bouncy. Let's try some of that beef. Some parts are really tender and fall apart, but then there's some type parts that are more on the chewy side. Let's try the broth. Ooh, it's super thick and like rich in beef flavor. It's not super, super spicy. I'd say it's like more like a mild to a medium spice. This is a hearty bowl of beef noodle soup. I love getting some noodle in my spoon and then adding some of the broth and then just eating it all in one bite. Mm. So good. We also got some tongbao nyoro, which is like Mongolian beef. And then we also saw them making this being like kind of a pancake type thing. So we decided to order that as well. We're gonna make a little wrap with some of the beef and onion, just like that. Mm, mm. The beef has a lot of flavor. It's also tender. I also love the onions because they have a nice crunch to them too. They're like cooked enough where they're not raw, but then they're also not super cooked where they're like soft. They still have the crunch. And the pancake part is so chewy. Look at that stretch. Wow, really good. So our first stop today, they only sell one thing here and it's this soup. It has these noodles that are very thin and short. They almost look like enoki mushrooms and they also have bits of intestine in there. And they have these little stalls where you can add chili, garlic, and vinegar to customize it to your liking. Mm. The noodles are so smooth. It has so much flavor, kind of like a bonito flake flavor. And there's hints of like white pepper. Oh, I got an intestine. It's not too bad. I'm not usually an intestine person, but it's actually not too bad.
Okay, and then of course, when you're in Jimending, you have to go to the Xing Fu Tang here. Not all Xing Fu Tang is created equal. So if you want the best Xing Fu Tang, in my opinion, it's the one in Jimending. But yeah, this is their classic brown sugar boba drink. This is just brown sugar boba and milk. Also, this is my friend Michael's drink, and he is kindly letting me drink it for this video. I didn't want a whole one to myself, so I'm just taking a sip of his. Let's mix it up. Mmm, mm. the boba texture is soft, chewy, bouncy, has a rich brown sugar flavor. You know, this boba has a little bit of a mushy texture on the outside. I remember it in the past being better than this, actually. I wonder if something changed in their recipe or something. It's still good, it's just not as good as I remember. Right now we are at Lao Shandong Handmade Noodle. We ordered their popular beef noodle soup. The noodles are nice and thick. They're also very uneven, so you know that they're hand pulled, which always gets me really excited. They also have a station where you can add a bunch of different condiments and stuff like soy sauce, sesame sauce, pickled greens, spicy butter. But I'm gonna go ahead and just add these green onions in. I love my green onions. The noodles are very slippery and smooth. They do have a bit of a chew to it. Let's try a piece of beef. It's not melt in your mouth tender, like it does have a bit of a bite to it, but also some parts of it are quite soft as well. All right, now time for the broth. Oh, it's actually quite light in flavor. Not super rich like Yong Kong beef noodle. It does have a beefy flavor, but yeah, much lighter. I feel like beef noodle soup is such a personal preference type of thing. Like if you like a lighter broth, I do think you'll like this broth, but I personally like the rich broth like at Yong Kong beef noodle. Small potato can lead to big changes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means. This is a grapefruit drink. I don't even like grapefruit, but not bad. We are at Tian Tian Li, and they're very well known for their oyster omelet. And we also got their Lu Rou Fan, which is minced pork rice. That is one of my personal favorite Taiwanese dishes, so definitely have to order that. Also, just a heads up, this restaurant is very snug. You know, we're all kind of cozy up in here. So yeah, you're probably gonna be sharing some elbow space with your neighbors. Look at it, it's steaming hot. It's good. Minced pork rice, it always looks like the ratio of the minced pork to the rice is way more rice, but it's because the sauce, it's like meaty. There's like some fattiness in there as well. It's very rich, flavorful, umami. You really need all that rice to balance it. Now for the oyster omelet. I typically am not a huge oyster omelet person, but it is a classic Taiwanese street food. Ooh, this sauce on top, it's kind of like sweet, a little tangy, but the egg is nice and fluffy. I think this is the kind of thing only certain people will like it because it does have a very gooey, slimy texture. And I know sliminess is not everyone's favorite texture. Like I said, it's not my favorite Taiwanese street food, but it's definitely worth trying if you're in Taiwan. King ice cream. They have super unique ice cream flavors. Like they have lots and lots and lots on their menu. Ones that definitely would stick out are their pork floss ice cream. They also have a Gao Liang ice cream, which is like 58% alcohol. And they have like sesame oil chicken, curry, wasabi. So many unique flavors that I've never seen before. I got the jasmine tea flavor. Let's give it a try. Oh, the ice cream texture itself, it's not super creamy. It's kind of like a mix between a sorbet and ice cream, but nice tea flavor and it's like very light. Michael got the passion fruit flavor, so I'm gonna try some of his. Hmm. Wow, I really like the passion fruit one. I think the texture works better in this one. So the passion fruit flavor makes it nice and refreshing and it's quite strong and tart. Ooh, I like this one a lot. And if you're adventurous, you can try pork floss or sesame oil chicken or curry or wasabi or chili pepper. <laughs>
All right, now we are at the Gongguan area and we went to one of my favorite street food places. It's called Lanjia Gua Bao. It's also known as a Taiwanese hamburger and it's basically a pork belly bun with pickled mustard greens, peanut sugar, and cilantro. So it's a very interesting combination. Here they let you choose the option of having only lean meat or only fatty meat or you can do a half-half. So that's what I opted for. Mm. You get some bites with the lean pork and then you get some with the fattiness too and that just like melts in your mouth Then you get the acidity and crunch from the pickled mustard greens and the cilantro really brightens it up at the end mm. I just got a bit of that peanut sugar adds this nuttiness a little sweetness and the bun is just so soft We also stopped by Liu Jia Sui Jin Bao and they basically just sell these pan fried buns. Ooh, they're quite hot. Look at it. It's just steaming Mmm the dough is soft and pillowy, but also has a little chew to it, which is really nice. The pork filling is actually really flavorful. Like they have this little station where you add some sauces, but I don't even know if you need it because it's actually plenty flavorful on its own. The bottom still has a little crisp to it. It did get a little soggy because we've been like walking around, but still good. My favorite boba place that used to be across from the Gua Bao place closed a few years ago and they never reopened. So I'm trying to find a new favorite boba place. Hopefully this is it. I got their brown sugar boba with milk. Mmm. Boom. The boba has a nice brown sugar flavor. Since it's just milk, it's not too sweet. It balances it out really well. This is better than the Xin Fu Tong we had earlier today. Our last stop is Shengji Scallion Pancake. I don't know if I said the intonation correctly, but I'll put the name on the screen. So I got the original pancake. I added egg, medium spicy, as well as mustard. That's a very unique thing that they do here is they add mustard to the scallion pancake. <gasps> look at that. It actually looks so crispy and flaky. Look at all those layers. Wow. First you get that little light crisp on the outside. Then the dough part is nice and chewy. It has a lot of flaky layers. And then paired with the egg, it's just so good. I'm starting to feel the heat. It's not too bad. It's actually complements it really nicely. And I got a little kick of that mustard. It adds this like sourness, but it actually works. Like it sounds like a weird combination, but it actually works quite well together. I feel like this is pretty on par with my favorite one, the Tianjin Tongzhua pancake. So if you're in the Gongguan area, this is the place to go. If you're on Yongkong street, that is the place to go. All right, so that concludes part one of our Taipei food tour. Comment below what was your favorite food from the video. I am so excited to hear you guys' thoughts. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on part two when it comes out. And once it's out, I'll have it linked in the description box and in the cards. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!